Hey Rayleigh and anyone else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. So continuing through Genesis today 25 through 27. And we've been following the story of Abraham, of Isaac, of Rebecca. Um, we saw a little bit from Hagar. Um, today though we're going to be looking at that transition. So the death of Abraham, Jacob and Esau, and a little bit of red stew um, or lentil stew I think uh, some translations say. Uh, and then finally, uh, Jacob receiving Isaac's blessing. And we'll talk very briefly about why that's important. So all of this in Genesis 25 through 27. So chapter 25. Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Joshkin, Median, Median, Ishbak, and Shua. Joshkin was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites, the Letushites, and the Lemutites. The sons of Median were Epha, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Elidra. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac, but while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Altogether, Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Mechpelah near Marme in the field of Ephron, son of Zoar the Hittite, the field that Abraham had brought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Bir Laha Roy. This is the account of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Sarah's maidservant Hagar, the Egyptian, bore to Abraham. These are the descendants of the sons of Ishmael, listed in order of their birth. Neboeth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Abdeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jatur, Naphish, and Kedima. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers, according to their settlements and camps. Altogether, Ishmael lived 137 years. He breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area from Havilah to Shur, near the border of Egypt, as you go towards Asher. They lived in hostility towards all their brothers. This is the account of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Armenian from Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Armenian. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. And two peoples from within you will be separated. One will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so that he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man, staying among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, Look, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was called Edom. Jacob, Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is a birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Chapter 26 Now there was a famine in the land, besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands. 
and confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and will give them all these lands, and through your offspring, all nations on the earth will be blessed, because Abraham obeyed me, and kept my requirements, my commandments, my decrees, and my laws. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of this place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister, because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebekah, because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the men might have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, anyone who molests this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds that the servants of the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Isaac reopened the wells that he had dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with, a, with Isaac's herdsmen and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Esek, because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ahuzath, his personal advisor, and Phicol, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me, since you were hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you, so we said there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm, just as we did not molest you, but always treated you well and sent you away in peace. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. That day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug, and they said, We have found water. He called it Sheba. And to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and also Basemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. They were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Chapter 27. While Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the open country and hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat, so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some food, tasty food to eat, so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully, and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock, and bring me two choice young goats, so that I can prepare some tasty food for your father, just the way he likes it. Then, take your father to eat, take it to your father to eat, so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, But my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a man with smooth skin. 
What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would, oops, and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, my son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother. And she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebecca took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and she put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with goat skins. Then she handed to her son, Jacob, the tasty food and the bread that she had made. He went to his father and said, My father? Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I'm Esau, your firstborn. I've done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy, like those of his brother Esau. So he blessed him. Are you really my son Esau? he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to eat, that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of heaven's dew and earth's richness, an abundance of, abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food for him and brought it to his father. Then he said to him, my father, sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, who are you? I am your son, he answered, your firstborn, Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it into me? I ate it before you came, and I blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? He has deceived me these two times. He took my birthright, and now he has taken my blessing. Then he asked, Haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him lord over you, and have made all his relatives his servants, and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you only have one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from your neck. Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told that her older son Esau had said, what he had said, she sent for her younger son, Jacob, and said to him, Your brother Esau is consoling himself with the thought of killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm disgusted with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land, from Hittite, from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. This is a really intense story that I, I'll admit I've struggled with for a while. Um, I think it's a, it's a testament to the idea of life's not fair. Um, we have the firstborn and he really should be given the birthright. That's always how it's done is the firstborn gets those blessings and that birthright. And yet we see from the outset, he's kind of willing to give that up for some stew. And yet that doesn't make Jacob's actions right. Just because Esau said, sure, what good is that of me? Take my birthright or whatever. Um, that doesn't make Jacob's actions right. 
And I think, I guess what I take from this story is two things, and I had to write them down to make sure I'm saying them right, is he didn't have an easy life after this. I mean, we'll hear in the next couple of days, Jacob doesn't have an easy life. God sees what he did and knows that it's not good. Um, we'll see what the rest of his life looks like, and it's not, um, it's not pain-free. God sees all of it. God sees all of what we do, and he knows what we do. But then the second part of that that I take from that is we're not so lost or so fallen that God can't redeem us and can't use us for his glory. So I guess that's my prayer for you, Rayleigh, is number one, know that whatever you do, wherever you are, God knows you and he loves you and he sees you. And that should be a comfort to you. But if it's not, not right away, then know that no matter what you've done, no matter the decisions that you've made, God can still use you. He still loves you and can still use you um, for your betterment and for his kingdom. Anyway, that was my, uh, my prayer for you today. Um, know that I love you and I am praying for you. Love you so much, sweetie. And uh, yeah, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.